Welcome. Hey, y'all. Hey, let me make sure we're recording. Okay, we are recording. Uh, let me take a minute to introduce myself for those who are new. Welcome to my channel. I do see my little numbers growing up and up and up. It's my little my little channel that could, and I'm so grateful. I'm Dr. Samaria M. Colbert. I am the founder of an organization called Kingdom Creative Counseling. Uh, I've been in the mental health field. It'll be 20 years in August of next year. So ain't that something, y'all? <laughs> uh, I'm my number one obsession really is uh Jesus, the color purple, and the writing. I have as a right now I'm recording this, I have started my 90th book. However, these are recorded way in advance as I as I usually try to explain. And um, this will go out, I think, the week after Christmas, if I can't remember, if I can uh, remember correctly about the exact date. And so I will be probably way past that. But my goal is books within the next five to 10 years. And I want to say welcome. Let me just make sure, because I keep vacation, y'all. Hold on. Okay. I'm sorry if the sound goes out. We're just going to keep it. We're going to make it work. We're going to make it do. Do. Let me make sure. I'm in here. Okay. All right. So the today we're going to talk about the power of submission. I don't know what's happening, but we're going to just keep moving in the name of Jesus. The power of submission. Uh, submission, beloved, is not a dirty word. I know we are living in that submission may feel like a dirty word, but indeed not. Give me one minute. I'm going to pause this for a minute. My Hopefully that is fixed it. Um, but I was saying the, the, the title is called Power of Submission. Remember, submission is not a dirty word. We're not going to die. And I want to talk to you briefly about um, what it means to submit. I think that and one thing I'll address uh, shortly is that um, this is where a mental health thing, when you've experienced abuse, when you've experienced neglect, when you've experienced being abused, uh, psychological abuse, emotional abuse, or even church abuse or church hurt, um, that is where the infraction comes when it comes to submission. Um, just like they say, when a woman is, a woman could be ultra like in her, I, 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 keep, I hate these use word masculinity in her, you know, in her, you know, go get them girl. And she may become more guarded or she may be, uh, take on a masculine nature. But when she meets a man that is truly her leader and she feels safe with, she will naturally ask us to be a more submitted woman. Uh, and so there's reasons why people don't submit. And so I want to approach the text. I approach, approach it's, not it's not like I'm going to preach, right? I want to approach uh, this topic with honor. I want to approach it with, uh, respect, and I don't approach it with an understanding uh, that people are hurting. Um, sometimes I do talk about different things that I've gone through with different things, and I'm very passionate. And sometimes when I get passionate, I feel like it just comes off a little too harsh. But uh, but but I want to talk about this power and submission because submission, believe it or not, is a godly thing, and it is how the kingdom of God flows. There's certain things that flows in the kingdom of God, and how. It uh, we can elevate, we can be promoted, we can be um, transformed, we can be successful in uh, through God's eyes through submission. So just because people had perverted this wonderful concept does not mean that it by default is wrong. Uh, there is power in submission, and I want to give this context, but also again understanding why people have difficulty uh, submitting. And I want you to uh, hear my heart uh, when I say that. Now, if I switch off now, y'all, like I say, I, I get passionate. And if I get like, ah, I'm not trying to be judgmental um, because I've been in different areas and spaces and I, and I talked to so many people uh, um, about that. And I feel like sometimes people have difficulty submitting when your hurt has not been acknowledged and you've been ignored. And uh, we have to fight for ourselves. We don't submit. We feel like we got to fight for ourselves. We got to fight for our sanity. We got to be defensive because we've been taken advantage of. Okay, so let's talk about this. And Holy Spirit, open our ears to hear what is you in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so uh, many years ago, Pastor Ronald Godby, Godby, who is a pastor of the River Church in Durham, North Carolina, said this in one of his messages. And this was 
uh, some time ago. He says, lightning unsubmitted is dangerous. However, lightning submitted is illuminating. Uh, and so, um, and that is true. If we, if we turn on our light, you know, we are in the light today. Thank you, God, <laughs> for that. <laughs> um, um, because lightning now is submitted, I have a lighted room when I go to my home. Hopefully the light's still on because we have a little uh, tornado warning. And, you know, sometimes lights go out in my house. Thank you, Jesus. But not because I didn't pay the bill. <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn my lights on and it's going to illuminate darkness. So lightning, illum uh, unsubmitted, can be dangerous. It can be harmful. It could end somebody's life. You get struck by lightning. But because it's been submitted, you now have what we see today. So watch this. Uh, point number one, and we're going to go through this through no particular order, is the power of God flows through submission. Submission means the action or the fact of accepting or yielding to a, sumer, a superior force or will or authority of another person. We uh, sub, uh, Submission also means as a form of humility, and meekness. Um, it's a form of humility and meekness. The authority of God flows through submission. I want to uh, read a text in a minute that uh, the Lord just brought to my mind. So you may have to give me a minute while I find this text. But the truth of the matter is if we're going to operate in the kingdom of God, if we're going to operate in the world, we're going to have to submit to something, to someone. Um, you know, if you a police officer <laughs> or if you don't want to get arrested, you understand, if you, you you may have to submit to the laws of the land. Uh, if you want a job or a career, you're going to have uh, supervisors that you have to submit to. Uh, even for myself, I'm a full-time entrepreneur. I still had to submit my business to my licensing board. I still had to submit to the, uh, the ethics and the uh, board that licensed me. And I have to do what they require of me as to submit my license every, uh, submit my license for a renewal every two years and meet the requirements of my continued education units. Thank God I've done that every year. So submission has requirements, but there's nobody, even if you're a full-time entrepreneur who can go through life uh, unsubmitted. Uh, you won't have, you have a hard time. Even if you're an entrepreneur, you work solely for yourself. There are areas of freedom that you may have, but you still have to submit. I can't uh, treat my clients any kind of way uh, and, and expect to have a valuable business. And so I say that in context of this, everybody has to submit. And you are not qualified to operate in authority if you cannot submit to authority because anointing and power and the grace that God has called us to operate in um, flows through authority, uh, flows through submission. Now, let me, let me give you uh, the context and you're going to give me a minute because the scripture just came in my head. Uh, so there was a soldier, let me just, who went to Jesus on behalf of his servant. Give me one minute here. Just sometime when I'm doing this stuff, just pops in my mind. Uh, and that is found in Matthew chapter eight. So give me a minute. Let me find Matthew chapter eight. I'm going to explain kind of a little more in context. So Matthew eight, and I believe it's the, was it the fifth verse. And I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. Watch this. Um... When Jesus returned to, Cap to Capernaum, a Roman officer came and pleaded with him, Lord, uh, my young servant lies in a bed, paralyzed in terrible pain. But Jesus said, I will come and heal you. And the officer said, Lord, I am not worthy for you to come into my house. Just say the word from where you are and my servant will be healed. Watch, I know this because I am under authority. He said, I'm submitted to authority. I'm submitted to my superior officers and I have authority over my officers. So I'm submitted to people. I'm, I'm, I'm in authority. I have people over me and they are, and I'm submitted to their authority and I have people under me. 
okay? And they submit to my authority. See how that works? He's saying, I understand how your authority works. And he says, I only need to say go and they go and come and they come. And if they say to my slaves, do this and do that. Why? Well, says when Jesus heard this, he was amazed turning to those who are following him, those who are around him and said, you see, you see this man here? This is a godly example. I tell you the truth. I haven't seen faith like this in all of Israel. So authority, faith, and submission go together. And I tell you this, that my Gentiles will come from, from many Gentiles. He was saying something. He could remember Romans and Jewish, and they didn't get, you know, get along. He was said, many Gentiles will come from all over the world, east and west, and sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the feast in the kingdom of heaven. But many Israelites, those whom the kingdom will be prepared for, will be thrown into outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. He says, because you are submitted to me, you now have access to the kingdom of God where those who the kingdom was prepared for won't even won't even have access to it. They will be in outer darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth. But you have access because you are submitted to Christ. And then Jesus said this, go back because you believed it has happened. And the servant was healed from the same hour. I want you to see how the kingdom of God flows. This Roman soldier would say, listen, I'm in authority. So I already know how your authority works. So when someone is dishonoring authority, watch this. They're not really in authority, in a perverted authority because authority recognizes authority and respect recognizes respect. And Jesus was saying, and the, the soldier was saying, listen, I, I'm not even worthy. I'm submitted. I'm not worthy. I'm humble for you to even come into my house, but I still respect your authority. And I also have to ask myself, what kind of servant that you have to be, to be a high ranking Roman officer and you go and seek Jesus on behalf of a servant. What kind of servant do you have to be? to be that powerful. Again, authority recognizes authority, but authority is not authority if it is not submitted. Everybody in authority, even in marriage, has to be submitted to authority because the power flows. Jesus said because you sum because of what because of your actions, the healing, the power of God flew uh flew. The power of God, excuse me, uh, was present in that servants that very day because of his superior submitting to authority, seeking help from a greater authority and then honoring that authority. And then the power of God uh, was able to manifest where the servant was still sick and that the Bible was from that very hour. I hope I'm making sense to you. We all have to submit. Now, the Bible says in Romans chapter 13, Respect authorities, the New Living Translation, it reads, everyone must be subject to governing authorities for all authority comes from God. Those in positions of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels or is rebellious against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. So when someone rebels against authority, when someone dishonors authority, someone disrespects authority, when you want trying to uh, um, fight against or uh, compete with people in authority, or you, you ain't nobody. You put your leg in one foot in the other just like me. Bad, 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 bad. The Bible says you are rebel re rebellious and you will be punished. Uh, I heard a preacher said I was, uh, uh, I believe it was Pastor Jenkins out of First Baptist of Glenard, and he was. Uh, counseling a young couple, which I love that church, by the way. It's not my church, but I love it. <laughs> uh, he was counseling a love a, a, a couple, and they said to the um, individual, respect the position even when you can't respect the person. Sometimes people in authority do some of the most ratchet things. Uh, they step outside the authority of God, but just because they do does not mean that that gives us a license or right to be dishonorable because at the end of the day, they got to answer to God and so do we. And I can't say, well, because your, your person in authority was real. I'm responsible for me. Nobody can make you feel or do anything. But again, uh, submission is not abuse. We'll talk about that. Just give me a minute. We're going to go on here. Uh, verse three in Romans chapter 13 for authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing what is right, but those who are doing what is wrong 
Would you like to fear? Uh, would you like to live without fear of authorities? Do what is right and they will honor you. The authorities, watch this, are God's servants sent for your good. But if you're doing wrong, of course you should be afraid. So you should never be afraid of authority. If you're doing right, the right thing, you don't have to be afraid of authority. <laughs> if you have a humble and a servant's heart, you know, I, and I believe that uh, we should hold each other accountable. So if you have a husband or your best friend, they're in authority and things of that nature, you should be able, you can still approach them, but always approach them with respect and honor. Um, th th there's a saying that goes, come before his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. And I know that's about uh, how we come before the courts of God, but it's also how we become, how we, become, be how we um, uh, approach pe persons in authority. It's from a kingdom mentality uh, when uh, someone was approached the king, they would first come with, they would come and they would bow. And then they would say, oh, great king. If you look at Daniel, who was sent before a king, Joseph, who was sent before a king, uh, Samuel, who was sent before Eli, they will always want to praise God first. And they will say, oh, great, great king. Even if they were sending a word of correction, it was always humility, giving grace and giving glory to God. Uh, Daniel said something about um, God is the one who reveals secrets. Joseph said the same thing. God is the one who was a revealer of dreams and we give him uh, thanks and all that. And then he interpreted the dream. He was never like, well, you, you rebellious and you lived up in pride. He was able to hold him accountable, interpret the dream and then give him wise counsel. Daniel warned people, oh great king. Uh, and, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, quoting from the New Living Translation, which is a little bit more lame this term. He said, oh great king, uh, I recommend that you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that this dream that happened will not come to pass because uh, the king during uh, Daniel's time had a warning dream. Okay, Joseph gave wise counsel about the seven days of plenty and seven days of lack. I recommend that you hire an administrator to help you to begin to navigate the seven years of plenty. But they always came with honor. Come before his course with thanksgiving and enter his course with praise. So I honor you. I honor you, person in authority, but I still give God the praise. But so the Lord revealed this to me concerning you and concerning your life. And this is how we ought to approach it. All right. Uh, it says, verse six, pay your taxes to those uh, for the same reasons for government workers need to be paid. <laughs> now, I used to work for the government and we do need to be paid. I don't work for the government. Thank you, just did to Mo, but we certainly, uh, they are serving God and what they can do and give to everyone, verse seven, who you owe taxes, pay your taxes, your government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. So that is Romans chapter 13. And again, reading it from the New Living Translation. Y'all know that's my favorite translation next to the uh, KJV. So watch this. Well, another reason why we are to submit, we said the power of God flows through authority. We said that God is the part of the fruit of the spirit. We said we all have to submit regardless of the position, the power of your in. But guess what? Jesus was submitted to authority. So if Jesus was submitted to authority and his power had come through his submission to his father, why do we think that we can be so anointed that we don't have to submit to greater authority? And remember, your friends are not all, all your friends can hold you accountable. They may not necessarily be the person that you submit to their authority because they hold you accountable. You know, they can say, hey, friend, that's not right, but you're not submitting to their leadership per se, because they're your friend. There's a camaraderie there. Sometimes your friends don't know what they're talking about. But when God has placed a greater authority over you, you submit to that greater authority as well. So we always, even when we're in authority, we'll have people under us. We'll have people that are on the same level as us. Those are our friends. Those who give us, they can give us wise counsel and give us their opinion. But then there should be someone over us that, that we submit to their governing order. Okay. But Jesus was submitted. Uh, John chapter six, around about the 38th verse. And it reads for, I have come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me not to do my own will. Jesus said, I didn't come for, for my own agenda. As a matter of fact, there is a scripture that he made himself of no reputation. He wasn't trying to make a name for himself. He was submitted to God, even when it hurts. Okay, John chapter 8, 28th verse, New Living Translation, and it reads, so Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of God on the cross, then you will understand that I am he. I do nothing, watch this, this is what Jesus said, I do nothing on my own, but I only say what the Father taught me to say, God the Father, and Jesus was submitted to him. He says, I didn't come on my own. I came to do the will of the Father. 
So submission means to humble ourselves before God and he will exalt. Does it mean we, we trying to get next to who's who and what? Because people can talk. I'm submitted. I'm submitted. I obey my leaders and I believe my spiritual father. I, and I believe I, and I obey my pastors and all that. And they just ratchet. <laughs> they just ratchet. Remember, your, your character is not defined by what you say. It's not defined by what you do in front of a crowd. Your character is a display by what you do when no one's looking. This is not in my notes, but a reminder of a, uh, Elisha who had a servant named Gehazi. Behind Elisha's back, that's what Gehazi was doing, trying to steal. That's called greed. That's not submitted, okay? Uh, same way with Eli. Guess what the sons was doing? <laughs> greed. Okay, so let's keep it moving. So um, First Peter 5 and 6. Now we're going to switch gears. We're going to read it from New King James Version. It says, therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due season. That means we got to submit to God. Submission and humility and humbling yourself are the same thing. As a matter of fact, if you look up the definition of Google submitted, submission or uh, submitted, a uh, a synonym is going to be the word humbled or to humble yourself. Jesus submitted, watch this point number five, even when it was literally going to hurt him. He knew that the father in heaven had, he was going, he's going to die. He just knew that. And he knew that that was God's will. And that seemed unfair. You want me to submit somebody and they're going to send me to death. They're going to allow me to die. And I, I got to submit to them. But let's talk about what Jesus said. It's gonna, we're going to read this from the New King James Version. Because submission is not always pretty. <laughs> Talks of areas. Submission is not always pretty. Sometimes submission is not even submit, submission really until you disagree, but you decide to submit anyway. God, I don't agree with you on this one. This is hard. But he said, just trust me. Just do what I told you. Just be obedient. Just do what I told you to do. I promise you I'll make it right. So John 22, uh, we're going to start chapter 22 and we're going to go to the 42nd verse in the New King James Version. And it reads saying, this is when Jesus is down the cross. Father, if it is your will, Take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. He, he was getting ready to go through the torture of the cross. And he was saying, I don't even want to do this, but if it's your will, because I love you that much. I love you that much, God. And sometimes God, if you really be honest, God will put us in some situations. He'll allow certain things. God, wait a minute. This is hard, you know? But that's, uh, you know, but we're, going, we're moving forward. Then the angel appeared to him in heaven, strengthening him. Because the angels will strengthen us when we are submitted. Verse 44, and being in agony, which just means great turmoil, he prayed more earnestly. Then sweat became like, then his sweat, excuse me, became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. He was crying tears of blood because of the agony he was in and he still submitted to the will of the father so that we could have a right to, 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 to God. So we can have a right to the tree of life so that we can have a right to eternal life. So why, when Jesus had to submit to this extent, why do we think that we don't have to do that? Because it hurts sometimes to submit. Point number six, wives must submit to their husbands and husbands must submit to God. Both of us must be submitted to God. Uh, Ephesians 5, 22 through 23. Now, let me give you this caveat. That's why I said you ought to, you really ought to evaluate the people uh, that you have in your life before you start dating somebody and claim you're going to marry somebody. Because a lot of times the men will do the opposite and women will do the opposite. This ain't a dating game, but let's just talk for a little minute. Okay, let's talk for a little minute, a little minute, okay? Sometimes... Women will take guys that they got to lead to the cross, lead to Jesus. You got to fix them up. I, I told y'all before, God is not going to send you a project. He's going to send you a partner, not a project. But women will date these guys that we can mold them and make them into this great man of God. And just wait for him to change. And it don't work. We waste a lot of time, a lot of years trying to make someone be what God wants them to be. However, uh, guys have to be really cautious of stop not entertaining women who don't want to be led. You can say, I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man. You got to respect me. And you dating old girl over here. She ain't trying to submit to no man. 
Okay. Let's talk. I'm, I'm in the I'm in the text. I'm in the text, okay? I'm in the text. You know, we date people that just that they're all over the place, you know. He don't want to go to church, Shannon. He don't love God. He won't keep your drawers, your drawers. You understand what I'm saying? And she don't love God more than a bit in the moon. She don't want to be submitted to no man. We want to be in relationship with each other. Make it make sense. Okay. All right. Uh, Ephesians 5. We're going to start at the 22nd verse. I'm not going to read all this, but uh, read it on your own time, right? Because it's a, it's a long text, but I got just a few more minutes here. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. So if you can't, you can't say I'm submitted to your Lord, I can't submit to my husband. Oh, it's tight. The, the air is sucked out of the room here. Okay. Uh, verse 23, for a husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. For he is the savior of his body, the church, as the church submits to Christ. So wives should submit to your husbands and everything. That's why you got to choose wisely. If the brother can't lead and you dating him, if the brother can't lead in in the conversation, if he, if he sort of kind of passes by God, if he don't trust God, I can't deal with a man who can't trust God. If if you can look at this person's decisions and choices and it is determined, they really just don't have, they don't trust God in their own personal life. What are we going to do? <laughs> For husband, this means you love your wife just as Christ loved the church, for he gave up his life for her. Uh, verse 27, he did not present her to himself as a glorious church without, he did this to present her to himself as a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy without fault. Uh, verse 28, we're going to move forward past this text. It's a tight one that we want to skip over in the Bible. You know, we want to pick and choose the scriptures we want to read. I'm just saying, okay. 28, in the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually loves himself. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. And we are, uh, verse 30, and we are members of his body. Verse 31, and the scripture says, a man leads his father and his mother and is joined to his wife and the two are united as one. This is a great mystery for it is the illustration of the way Christ and his church are one. If, when a man does not treat his wife correctly, God stops up his prayers because how a husband and wife love each other is how is a sim symbol of, of how Christ loved the church. It's 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 a symbolic thing. And so that's why you can't find yourself in a relationship with people who don't trust or love God. It should be the number one deal breaker if you determine that someone's lived up in pride and they don't trust God. If they can't trust God, you can't trust your heart with them because they don't trust God. You got to be careful who you submit to. So that kind of leads to the next question. Does that mean God won? Because a lot of time we think submission is abuse and it's not. You have to discern correctly. If they are not submitted to God on their own, if they don't love God on their own, they're going to have a very difficult time loving you. And, and you can't trust someone. You can't submit to one, someone. You can't put confidence in someone who doesn't trust God. Submission is love. Right? Love is patient and kind. Uh, First Corinthians, excuse me, 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices when the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith. It's always hopeful and endures and everything. When you truly love someone, you will submit. Now, when I'm not submitted, it's the opposite. It's impatient. It's not kind. It is jealous. It is boastful. It is proud because you can't be submitted and proudful at the same time. You cannot be submitted and proudful. You are irritable. You keep record of wrong. You see what I'm saying? Love has to flow. So submission also means service to one another. Matthew 23 through the 11th verse says, and the New King James Version says, but he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. 
watch this. Uh, you will be, you will never be elevated past your ability to submit. And remember, according to First Samuel sixteen, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So you can have someone, I'm submitted, I'm submitted, I'm submitted, but your heart posture is still not right. Sometimes people can be doing the right thing because they're trying to win you over. And they can be saying the right thing because they're trying to win you over, but their heart posture is not right. And I said at the beginning, when people have a crowd, they will act one way. Let us behind the scenes that really, really matters. Uh, submission is the posture of the heart. And I said this, when a person is not submitted, I'm going to almost close y'all, give me about mm, a few more minutes. When a person doesn't submit, we have to explore why and how do we want to heal. Sometimes we have to really, again, we have to trust our ability to discern. But if you've gone, if you just have a rebellious spirit, no one can tell me what to do. I'm so anointed. A lot of people are just so anointed, they just can't, just so anointed to pass submission, which, you know, it's not, it's, it's, it's no, just no. Uh, they're rebellious. Sometimes they are uh, experiencing past trauma. And so when you experience past trauma, you don't, sometimes you can't always determine when someone's giving you critique versus when someone is trying to hurt you because we're still fresh out of the trauma. Um, and sometimes when people are disobedient. You cannot, you when you trust God, it is not a hard thing to obey his word. Going back to what I said about trust, you cannot tell me that you were submitted to God and you were actively disobeying his word. He says, well, everybody, God knows my heart. Nobody, we always let that you know, judge, not scripture. That ain't what the study, taking it all out of context. When you trust God, it is easy to obey him. You cannot say, I'm, I trust God and I can't submit to his will. So now people are lifted up in pride and selfish ambition. They're stubborn. God tells you, go left, go left, go left. They go right, they go up, down, every dream between, and they'll do a thing God told them to do. You must, if you want to move forward into what God has for you, you have to learn to trust God and submit to his will. So other things, the last few things here, is submission really is a posture of the heart. The more you spend time with God, the more you spend time with his word. It's almost like meeting someone new. You don't trust him right away. But you spend time with him. He begins to change the heart posture. David said, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Uh, when we are submitted to God and his will, he purifies our heart. He purifies our motives. He begins to do surgery on our hearts, the trauma and the pain and, and the hurt that we've experienced and, and the fear that we that we have of, 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 of all the things. And uh, he begins to change our heart posture and he gives us a strong heart so that we can submit. Um I said submission is a reflection of your character because anyone, because anybody, anytime somebody got to holler about how submitted they are, I'm submitted. Blah, blah, blah. But behind the scenes, you're doing stuff behind you do, behind folks' back. You're just doing the absolute most. That is not, that's not submission. But it is also a character of the heart. When you are submitted to God, the anointing flows through. You ever see somebody, you can have someone that's uh, getting up and they're preaching very powerfully, but there's no anointing. They just, <laughs> And you got someone that's a little bit more like soft spoken, but you can feel the power of God because they're submitted to the will of God concerning the matter. And once you submit, the anointing flows through the head down. The more you submit to God, the more his anointing will begin to flow in you and through you. We don't submit because of fear. But remember, 2 Timothy says, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the power and the love of the sound mind. So if you're having trouble submitting to God, I'm really afraid because I'm afraid. I'm just afraid to get hurt again. Uh, you begin to pray, God, you have not given me the spirit of fear. And of course, going to therapy helps. God, I need to submit, but I'm, I'm, I'm so afraid. My my fear is, is immobilizing me. It's, it's keeping me frozen. You begin to ask God, do surgery. Take, take out the spirit of fear in my life so that I can fully obey you. Okay? Uh, one thing I tell my clients all the time, when you go to the ocean, this is another powerful um, story I look for, illustration of what it means to be submitted. When you go to the ocean, the ocean goes up so far and doesn't go back. Even in high tide, it goes whoop, back. Whoop. And that is an illustration of how submission works. It only goes but so far because God commanded it to only go but so far. I think that was a song by Nicole Millens. But anyway, uh, that is how submission works. The world is created through the axis of submission. The sun comes up at a certain time. The moon comes up at a certain time. Uh, how we do things, 
uh, it, it, it is submitted to the authority of God. And so the earth and the worlds, and we were created in how the governments work, the system of the government of this world, the governments, the actual government, the government of God, how we do things in organizations and organization leadership, it flows through submission. When someone wants to go off through their own thing, you know, that's when it becomes a problem. Healthy relationships flow through submission and servanthood. So uh, a key uh, red flag of someone getting into a relationship, someone, what you going to do for me? When two people get together and say, what can we do? What can I do for you? And how can we submit to each other? You know, uh, our strength and our weakness in relations. One person is going to be strong in one area. Another person is going to be strong in another area. And we got to figure out how we make this thing work. If two people are one submitted to God being the third cord and we are submitted to each other and we see each other as iron shoppers, iron equal partners, but we are servants to each other. Givers attract takers, but givers and givers make a beautiful, healthy relationship. That's where healthy relationships come from. There is always submission with boundaries. Okay. God, pray your prayer that God help me to discern who I can submit to. Because sometimes, again, the more you grow, people want to, people want to impress you and so they'll put their best foot forward and i'm here for you and i'm submitted to your authority your leadership and they just they got agendas okay but when you pray the bible says acknowledge god in all our ways he's going to give me clear stuff and you don't have to be confused if you just pray you don't have to be confused if you just pray okay Remember, submission is not abuse or manipulation. Someone says, you got to submit. They constantly got to tell submit to me. And I'm, I'm man in charge. And they're they just doing stuff with the Bible says, you got to submit to me. You da, da. If they got to holler about submission, most of the time when someone operates in the fullness of who they are as a person and they operate in the authority of God, you want to have people that try to buck against it. But those who have a heart for their leader, those who have a heart for God, those who have their own authority, it's not going to take away from them to submit. It really is not. When I submit to uh, uh, my license board, it doesn't mean that um, uh, weak. weak. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Submission does not make you weak or passive. Okay, you can be a doormat. No, you can speak up for yourself. God is not saying be a doormat in the name of being a good Christian. You can speak up for yourself. It's how you do it. Honor, respect, and and uh, it flows and submission. That's how the seed time and harvest time. That's the flow of the kingdom. When stuff, when something is stopped up, is stuck and is stagnant. Where are the heirs of disobedience? Where are we not following God's instructions? Where there, where is there an area area of dishonor? And where there is there an area of not being submitted to the authority of Jesus Christ? There is power in submission. You can check me out at www.samiracobra.com. All of my books are there. Um, if you want training courses at www.trainingchristianleaders.com. If you're located in North Carolina or can get to the state of North Carolina, uh, go to www.kingdomcreativecounseling.com and they will uh, we will be glad to serve you. Uh, if you cannot get to the state of North Carolina, you can go to www.psychologytoday.com. This is not sponsored by them. And they will assist you in finding a provider in your local area. God bless you. We'll be back in the day and the time of the banger.